initially we had a master plan for the Gosling Creek site, um, creating an environmental uh, recreation area. And through that, we brought up the concept of having islands built into Gosling Creek for the waterfowl that used the site so that they could have a nesting area um, away from predators. Well, we're looking at things like uh, the European red fox, which has been introduced to the country. It's very widespread. Um, control mechanisms aren't there that are viable at the moment. The other one is, uh, of course, cats as well, feral cats. So they're the two main targets. So they're introduced species that we're looking at excluding from getting to the island. Through the local land service, there became an opportunity and in collaboration with them, we came up with the concept of a floating island. Uh, which is what we have now constructed behind us. Um, it's made out of uh, high density foam and then plants planted on that. It is a product that is used for stormwater treatment in stormwater ponds, so gross pollutants, um, the roots of the plants take up the nutrients. It's not a new technology in the way of the island and the plant material and the process that it does. We're specifically targeting it for um, waterfowl to use as a roosting site so they can escape from that predation side of things and hopefully build up numbers um, of those birds. This project will have benefits well beyond what we see here. Doing innovative projects where we're bringing new things to the region allows us to really demonstrate that it can work in this area. A lot of times we see technology rolled out in other parts of the country or other parts of the world and people sort of think, oh it won't work here, not in our little part of the world, but when we can do things like this, do something new and show people that it works, it can really create more habitat down the track and we'll see really good increases in bird habitat and um, predator-proof nesting options for a range of waterfowl. Uh, there's a lot of issues um, with migratory birds, with threatened waterfowl and even just a lot of the species you'd see more commonly. Foxes and cats predating nests and taking chicks and taking adult birds on nests. Uh, so once we can use that science and understand what the issues are, we can come up with solutions that suit on a local scale. And we've been able to do that here and we've incorporated citizen science into the project by having a sign inside the bird hide where people can come and take photos and help us to understand the changes at the site and what sort of birds are using the site. So it's really taken science, put it into action and then involved the community to help us monitor what's happening at the site. We've had a lot of interest from people getting in touch to see how they can implement something similar and if the project has been successful. We're very collaborative as the Alliance and I know Orange City Council and local land services are always happy to help people. I mean, we're all in this together to try and improve habitat outcomes for our native flora and fauna. We've done the hard work, we've shown that this can work, we've shown how easy it is to get something like this happening. It's up to people now to go out and implement it themselves.